Hi, I'm John Davis, and this is Motor Week. Join us as Bentley delivers a more potent and posh Continental Super Sports. Pat Goss with help spotting a diamond in the rough. Zach Mascal goes over the edge and off the grid on a groovy journey. And we put midsize SUVs head to head to see who's on top. So come drive with us next. Week, television's original automotive magazine, brought to you by... It's got 430 foot units of beast. Tire Rack wants you to be smart with your car. They can help you choose the right tires for your vehicle. Oops. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Hum is the connected car system that assists and empowers drivers to help them be prepared for the road ahead so they can get where they're going. Rock Auto has auto parts from hundreds of manufacturers, offering a variety of brands, prices, and specifications. RockAuto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. State Farm is proud to support Motor Week. Autotempest.com, where you can compare used car listings from sites across the web. WeatherTech Digital Fit Floor Liners offer laser-measured, custom-fit vehicle floor protection in the front, back, and up the sides. WeatherTech, made in America. Bentley aficionados know that super sports models are the best of the best. With cranked up performance dating all the way back to their 1920s motorsports heydays. Well, Bentley delivers yet again. This Continental Super Sports is the fastest Bentley ever. So it's time to get some posh performance on. It's a given that when most Bentley owners hop behind the wheel, it's off to their country estate or perhaps to the office of whatever Fortune 500 company they work for. Fortunately, we didn't have to buy this 2018 Bentley Continental Super Sports to try it out. Rather, Bentley was kind enough to drop it off for a few days so we could, you know, kick the tires. And we did just that around the two miles and nine turns of Roebling Road Raceway near Savannah, Georgia. And why not? With a top speed of 209 miles per hour, it's the fastest four-seat luxury car you can buy. But that's only part of why the Super Sports is so, well, super. It all starts with the second generation of Volkswagen's D1 chassis around since 2012. Then the front end adds a new bumper with carbon fiber splitter, while the bodywork in the rear gets massaged with a new diffuser. Side sill extensions as well as hood vents are carbon fiber, and finally the rear spoiler has been aerodynamically optimized. The last Continental Super Sports we tested back in 2011 boasted a measly 621 horsepower. That won't do these days, so Bentley continues to crank up the aging 6-liter twin-turbo W12 engine, which now pushes out 700 horsepower and 750 pound-feet of torque. Yes, that's an insane amount of power for any car, but it's delivered so smoothly that surely some type of alien technology is also involved. Transmission, the same ZF8 speed automatic with a nice mechanical feeling shifter, no flimsy E shifter here, plus large paddles mounted on the steering column. Aiming this much opulence around a road course still doesn't feel natural, but huge standard 16 inch front carbon ceramic brake rotors help you to get woed down enough to make corners and an updated version of the GT3R's torque vectoring all-wheel drive helps you power out of them. Similar to a well-seasoned veteran on the sports field, it may not be as nimble as some of its competition, but it knows what it has and how to use it for maximum effect. And like guiding a battleship through a minefield, you have to plan ahead as much as possible, keep input smooth, and keep your wits and abilities about you to emerge on the other side unscathed. 
Find a sweeping back road that leads to a country club or an oceanside resort, and both you and the car will have a much better time. While in the driver's seat, you'll be mostly sheltered from the outside world, save for moderate amounts of engine noise and exhaust notes from a new titanium exhaust, but only when you want them. If you crave even more exposure, a convertible version is available as well. The Super Sport's racy looking interior comes courtesy of a new tri-color theme, diamond stitching throughout, and of course, seemingly limitless choices when it comes to veneers. Should you find yourself in the need to get out of town in a hurry, launching this rocket from a standstill is truly a unique experience. Hit the gas and there's a slight hesitation as you feel all of the brute's weight transfer to the rear, upon which time it squats and shoots you off the line at full power. 60 miles per hour comes in just 3.2 seconds. The Super Sports never stops piling on the power until you tell it to, and it feels like it's just getting going when the quarter mile ends in 11.5 seconds at 122 miles per hour. Government fuel economy ratings are fitting for a 700 horsepower car at 11 city, 20 highway, and 14 combined. Neither poshness nor performance come cheap, so you can imagine combining the two makes for a hefty price tag. $299,025 to be exact. Only about 250 or so of the 710 that will be made are available to us here in the colonies, so I wouldn't dawdle if I were you. A 700 horsepower leather-clad luxury missile would certainly not qualify as a necessity by anyone's definition. That just makes us want a 2018 Bentley Continental Super Sports even more. There may be an all-new Continental not too far in the horizon, but this beast is aging beautifully. Recently, our Zach Maskell literally stumbled across a family traveling the country in a very artistic mobile home. Call it a tiny house, an RV, or a bus that's on top of a bus. It truly is a horse, make that a house, of a different color. So let's go over the edge with Zach and enjoy the simple life living as a highway nomad. You should grab an easel and, uh... If a Chevrolet and a Volkswagen had a baby, would it grow up to look like this? It's a 1953 Chevy school bus with a 1969 VW bus on top of it, which allows for more headroom and a bed. Creative talent is only achieved when passion is coupled with hard work. That's what one of my favorite artists once told me. I happen to be wearing a shirt right now, Keegan Sweeney. I think he would definitely agree that this family is living up to that motto. The kids go, Mommy, Mommy, look, look, what's this? Look at this big bus. Let, no, let's go, let's go talk to these people. It's here for uh, you to just smile at and enjoy. It's actually here for you. Dubbed the Dragonfly Bus by a trucker in Nebraska, he says it drags up hills but flies down them. Artists Heather Platten and husband Leroy Herr, who's a mechanic by trade, travel with their two kids and dog, Moonshine. They use it to spread respect, freedom, and of course, love. We live full time in the bus. It's a tiny home and pop up mobile pop up art gallery. We invite people inside to check out the bus. We want to talk about sustainable living, what it's like to be on the road, how it, how it is to live in a tiny house. We try to bring people together, lighten the mood in the country, make people smile. Staying off the grid for six years and building and living in this bus the last two, they stay at national parks sometimes two weeks at a time. 40 hours a week making somebody else's money doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. The couple stresses to students in art classes across the U.S. that a 30-year home mortgage isn't for everyone. For them, spending more time with their kids and being forced to go outside is far more rewarding. $100 to me in the position that I put myself in is a lot. They don't just buy something new when it breaks. If it can be fixed, they fix it. So this is a 40 gallon water cistern and then I use this pump here to pump the tank, pump pressure up in the tank to get me water. 
Using solar panels to power the refrigerator and lights along with resources from the woods, they remain mostly self-sufficient. This is where I put my wood in here. The wood fire cook stove is awesome. I have a propane bag up. So it was only natural that a vehicle this unique ventured to our local cars and coffee in Maryland to see and feel the vibes this bus spreads at Hunt Valley Horsepower. I think it's very cool. It reminds me of Woodstock. Just you looking at this and you asking yourself, like, what's in there, you being curious yourself, you're kind of opening your mindset towards art. Activating the higher consciousness, your imagination and emotions, everything is tied together. So art could be the accelerant. To get the wheels turning upstairs, they allow anyone to draw anything anywhere on the bus. Why? Because you can't confine creativity. Janice Chaplin, I, um, somebody was in, it was in Alexandria, and he looked at me and he said, please put Janice Chaplin on your bus. And so I started on her right away. And then Bruce Lee, um, another suggestion. I could not go to one town without people demanding angrily that I put Jerry on the bus. This is the first piece that ever went on the bus. And this was done by somebody else in Austin, Texas. Should you meet the Dragonfly bus, get more artistic than me, and who knows just how many states or people it will spread to and positively impact. While Pat Goss certainly isn't a jeweler by trade, this week he shows us how to find that diamond in the rough down at Goss's garage. So you've decided you want to buy a collectible or classic car and you want to check it out yourself. Number one, I would recommend against that. I'd recommend you have a professional do it. But if you insist, here are some things you should look for. First, you want to look at the general condition of the outside of the car and the interior. And that's just self-explanatory. But you want to go under the hood of the car. And the things that you're looking for are to see what is original and what has been replaced. You want to make sure that you have as many original parts as possible. And you want to make sure, whenever possible, that it has the original engine, because that will have the biggest impact on the value of the vehicle. You want to make sure the transmission is appropriate for the vehicle, and so on. All of these things have a big effect on the value of the car. But here's the thing that a lot of you miss, and that is that you don't put the car up in the air. Now, you're certainly going to look for things like what we have here. We have this giant puddle of transmission fluid. Well, you need to look at that to see, is it something major? Well, in this case, it happens to be primarily a bad transmission pan gasket, so it's about an hour's repair not a big deal. You want to look at the frame and all of the components like that to see if there's any structural rust. Surface rust is not a problem, but structural rust, that can cost a fortune to fix. The other thing that you're going to do with the car up in the air, you're going to take some kind of a light and you're going to illuminate the side of the vehicle. You're going to go along like this and what you're doing is you're going to sight the side of the car. You're going to look down it as you bring the light towards you, and you're looking for signs of bodywork. And the other reason that you want this up in the air is that bodywork and painting is done with the car on the ground, so the perspective is looking down at it. Now you change the perspective and you look up at it, and you can see most of the mistakes. You want to look at the rocker panels and so on. You can also usually tell down here if there's been bodywork because the finish down there is not as good. Look at the bottoms of the doors. That'll tell you about bodywork on the doors. And always look for rust in all of these areas. Do it right. Spend some time doing it. And maybe you'll wind up with a great car. And if you have a question or comment, drop me a line right here at Motor Week. Better fuel economy is always a worthy proposition. Thus, the emergence of more and more standard hybrid electric vehicles, including our long-term Kia Nero. Still true to its type, winter weather does take a toll on efficiency. 
With the gas engine running more during warm-ups, our average slipped to 42 miles per gallon from this front-drive five-door crossover. That's after five months and 10,500 miles. Still, that's quite admirable, and we often do see 50 on the highway. But the Nero is so much more than a gas miser. It's comfortable, very roomy for its compact size, and we're loving all of the features packed into our still reasonably priced Nero Touring. We have had one snag. A faulty rear door latch caused a whole lot of unnecessary warning and required a day's stay at the dealer. We'll drop in on the Subaru Crosstrek and Honda Odyssey on our next MotorWeek long-term road test update. Time now to hit the start button on some first drive. So here's our latest quick spin. Destination Corsica, France, where Jaguar's second SUV, the new compact size 2018 E-Pace, prowls the curves of this Mediterranean island. Its two liter inline four turbo petrol engine pumps out 296 horses, enough to easily sprint up the mountain with a confident shifting ZF nine speed automatic. We found the steering very direct and well weighted for the sporty nature of Jaguar's latest Cub. In comfort mode, this really is a sporty and comfortable driving experience. But there's also a dynamic mode, and you know we have to try that. So once you put it in dynamic mode, the steering gets a little stiffer, the shifts are a little quicker, and the throttle is a little more responsive. But either way, the E-Pace creates a driving experience that really is probably a little more spirited than you might expect from a utility. A passenger grab handle clearly defines the driver-oriented but very quiet cabin. The E-Pace shares its D8 architecture with the Range Rover Evoque and the Land Rover Discovery Sport. But like F-Pace, Jaguar again created something very different. The sleek skin, coupish roof line, and athletic tuning definitely say new Jaguar. The 2018 Jaguar E-Pace is at dealers now, starting at under $39,000. Honda's triple charge for clean air is complete with the 2018 Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid sedan. It joins the Clarity Electric and Clarity fuel cell we tested earlier. The plug-in hybrid's electric drive has a 47-mile EV range, only five miles less than the smaller Chevrolet Volt. We found a near seamless transition to the 1.5-liter I-4 gas engine. Total system output is 212 horsepower. A peak charge and full tank can take you 340 miles. Steering is light and responsive as the Clarity remains composed through the curves around Napa, California. There are three driving modes, normal, econ, and yes, sport. In sport mode, steering wheel paddles adjust the aggressiveness of the regenerative braking. Right now, I have the most amount of regen dialed in, so when I'm coming down the mountain like this and let off the gas, the regenerative braking will actually slow me down to the point where I rarely need to use the brakes. And when I want to zip up and over a hill and around a corner in this particular scenario, all that electric motor torque makes it a lot of fun. Honda is smart to make multiple electrified models on one chassis. Plus, the 2018 Honda Clarity plug-in has a longer electric-only range than most European plug-ins, costing far more. On sale now nationwide, the price starts at just over $33,000. And we'll have more quick spins soon. One of the hardest parts about buying a new vehicle is narrowing it down to just the right make and model. Most buyers don't have the chance to do a side-by-side -side driving comparison but we do, and this week we do just that with family size three-row utilities. And once again, team up with our friends at cars.com to see which one stands above the pack. Three-row crossover style SUVs are firmly entrenched in the American culture, being more or less the replacement for the full-size station wagon of generations past. Families depend on them to haul their brood and possessions and manufacturers rely on them for the bottom line. With so much at stake, the competition is fierce. We joined our colleagues at Cars.com near Chicago, where four of these hefty haulers were ready for our challenge. 
We also had the help of a local buyer who's looking for the best option for his family. As in our previous challenges, there was a price cap, $46,000. All are V6 powered with automatic transmissions, all but one include all wheel drive and have a combined fuel economy rating of 19 or better. While there are quite a few choices in this class, most have remained much the same since the last test, so this challenge targeted four with recent redesigns and updates. Last year's winner, the Honda Pilot, an all-new entrant, the Volkswagen Atlas, the fully redesigned Chevrolet Traverse, and the updated Toyota Highlander. Each one went through careful scrutiny, and at the end, this is how they ranked. The fourth spot went to the Toyota Highlander. This all-wheel driver was equipped with a new 3.5-liter V6 engine and an eight-speed automatic. The $44,514 sticker put it at the top of pricing. It had the shortest wheelbase and overall length, so it lost points for space in the second and third rows. The Highlander was the smallest SUV here, but it had some of the most comfortable front seats. They were plenty wide, not too narrow, nicely bolstered, and they had power adjustments both for the lumbar and on the driver's side for your thighs, extending the seat forward and raising it up. You know, one of the things that you notice about the Toyota Highlander on the road is how comfortable it is, but also how polished it feels. It really is a quiet and smooth ride. And that shelf along the dash really is a nice feature. While the 2017 Honda Pilot came out on the top last time around, it garnered a third place finish here. The Pilot is well designed and as solid as they come. Its price is just under the Highlander at $44,370. It also shares the Highlander's combined MPG rating of 22 from its 3.5 liter V6 and nine speed automatic. The Pilot's nine speed transmission, which is one of its two transmissions, has always kind of baffled me. Um, there's a noticeable delay in acceleration. So you hit the gas and then you have to wait about a second for the engine to catch up with you. Second place goes to the 2018 Chevrolet Traverse, the only front-wheel drive ute in this test. But it has the most horsepower at 310 from a 3.6-liter V6 made it to a smooth 9-speed automatic. The Traverse is rated at 21 miles per gallon. At $44,185, it comes in a few hundred dollars less than the Pilot while providing the longest wheelbase and overall length among this group. It uses that space very well. It has the most cargo room, and it also has very spacious second and third rows. The Chevrolet Traverse can certainly haul people and their possessions in a comfortable cabin, but it, it really brings more to the driving experience than just that. On the road, it's, it's easy to maneuver, and, and it really has a sense of confidence. I was impressed by the, the overall design of the interior, the spaciousness of it. Again, not, not what I would consider luxurious, but a decent vehicle and, and something I could certainly see myself driving from day to day. That leaves first place to the new kid on the block, the 2018 Volkswagen Atlas with four motion. The 3.6 liter V6 and eight speed automatic produce the least horsepower and lowest combined MPG among these competitors. But with a sticker of $43,615, it boasts the best price. And with measurements that are close to the Traverse, the Atlas earns points for rear room for people and cargo, as well as technology. The Atlas's multimedia screen looks great. It's got vibrant colors and a very high resolution. The multimedia was phenomenal in this vehicle. The other really noteworthy aspect of this car was the spaciousness. I was able to sit in the second row and get it in a seating, comfortable seating position, and then immediately climb behind that seat into the third row and also sit comfortably. Uh, so I'm thinking this is the one vehicle out of the four where you could easily fill it up with six footers and, uh, and have a, a comfortable ride. All of these big utilities can get the job done, but it's no longer just about roominess and practicality. Technology and refinement raise the bar. And for now, the Volkswagen Atlas can shoulder the demands to meet that challenge. 
Well, that's our show. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, for more Motor Week, including daily news updates, podcasts, and even complete episodes, cruise on over to pbs.org slash motorweek. And I hope you'll join us next time. We test the track chops of the impressive Kia Stinger. Then Toyota raises the standard for the Highlander again. Till then, I'm John Davis. We'll see you right here on Motor Week. To learn more about MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine, visit pbs.org slash MotorWeek. To order a DVD of this program, call 1-800-873-6154. MotorWeek has been brought to you by... It's got 430 foot units of beast. Tire Rack wants you to be smart with your car. They can help you choose the right tires for your vehicle. Oops. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. WeatherTech Digital Fit Floor Liners and Cargo Liners offer laser-measured digital fit protection for your vehicle's floors. WeatherTech. Made in America. HUM is the connected car system that assists and empowers drivers to help them be prepared for the road ahead so they can get where they're going. Rock Auto has auto parts from hundreds of manufacturers, offering a variety of brands, prices, and specifications. RockAuto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. State Farm is proud to support Motor Week. Autotempest.com, where you can compare used car listings from sites across the web. This program was produced by Maryland Public Television, which is solely responsible for its content.